Hey everybody and welcome back to another video on my channel. So in this video I figured that I would make this kind of like a part two to the how to aim with motion matching video. So if you haven't watched that I suggest going to watch it because this will be basically a continuation off of that video because what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to set up the crouch aiming that we migrated from the Lyra starter project when we migrated that in that video. So. For those that have already done it, as you know with the last video we set up the wants to aim boolean and that we've imported the assets and that we made our motion matching databases and whatnot to where we get this result where we are aiming, right? However, now when we go to crouch and we, you know, walk around and whatnot, we don't have, you know, aiming animations that we got from the crouch uh, stuff that we've imported from the Liar Starter Project. So that's what we're going to be working on in this video. So. With your Lyra starter project, if you've if you've retarget them like you've done in the last video, if you did watch it, we should have them under UEFN animations and then in our pistol folder that we had made in that video. However, what I did before starting this video, because I was trying to do tests and whatnot with a lot of different stuff, is that I have turned it into a stand folder and a crouch folder where we have our standing animations that we had from the last video in here. And then if we go back into pistol, my crouch that I put all the crouching stuff into here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do with that is we're going to then go back into our UEFN folder animations and we're going to set up our motion matching databases for that, right? So if we open up motion matching data and go into databases and then dense, you can already see that we have a pistol work in progress here. So like again, like I said from the last video, you should have already had this done if you've seen it. If not, however, just quickly rewatch or go, quickly go and watch that video so that way you can kind of get caught up to this point. Uh, however, this can still be kind of standalone-ish if you just want to focus on the crouching animations. I'm going to try my best to do that. Uh, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to create two new folders. I'm going to call it stand and then the other one I'm going to call it crouch just so we have a degree of separation here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and then shift click to highlight all of these. And I'm going to actually copy these first before we move in there. So once you've hit control C or copy them however you want, go ahead and move these ones specifically into the stand folder. And then once you've done that, go ahead and open up the crouch and we are going to then paste our crouch animations here, our databases. But if it doesn't work, you may have to go back in and recopy them just to go back into here. And then now if we paste, there we go. Now we have all of them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up these or not open them up yet, but we let's go ahead and see kind of like what crouching animations we have. So if I jump back into the pistol where I had them, so yeah, right in here with the crouch, you can see that we have crouch entries and exits. I'm not going to really touch those just because with how we already have default um, choosings or like columns or enums that we have in the the chooser table. I'm not sure where to put the exits and entries yet as since we already switch, it kind of does like a decent job of switching our animations. So I'm not going to worry about these, but as you can see, we have our idle. We have an override pose, which I'm not sure what that does. But then we have our turn in place animations. We have our walk backwards or forwards, left, right. We have our pivots, we have our starts, and we have our stops. So what we need to do is we need to basically create, uh, rename our stuff to where it we have crouch pistol, idle, crouch pistol, turn in place, stuff like that. So go ahead and go back into the animations, motion matching data, and databases, sparse, and Cr not not crouch my apologies they're gonna go into pistol and then crouch so we have our pistol idle and then we have the loops because we have some loops we have pivots we have starts and then we have stops and then we have turn in place so for all these walk ones we can go ahead and just delete from here and then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna rename these so we already have pistol idle and so I'm gonna call it pistol crouch idle like that 
and then we're just going to rename the rest of these. So uh, I'm going to speed forward through this, but what you're going to do is you're essentially going to do the rename these to where it says pistol crouch walk, pistol crouch, you know, walk, you know, whatever, because we already have the start stops stuff at the end. You just need to replace uh, the run with crouch underscore walk. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. All right, guys, so I have finished that. So now when we look back at it, we have our pistol crouch idle, our pistol crouch turn in place. We have our pistol crouch walk loops and then our walk pivots and then our walk starts and our walk stops. So once you have that set up, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to head back into motion matching data and then we are going to go into our post search database dense chooser table and then you should already see so if you've seen my other videos you'll see that i've created a sprints in here already and i've created uh crouch idles and crouch walks and how we've copied and set those up right so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go into our crouch idles first so that way we can put in our idles our stops and our turns in place so if you open this up let's go ahead and add three asset rows and here we're gonna call it pistol crouch and what I'm gonna do is gonna highlight this and copy it just so that way I can repaste it into the search when we do all these asset rows so here we got the pistol crouch idle and then here we're gonna have the pistol crouch walk stops and then lastly the pistol crouch turn in place so here, we're, what we're going to do at the moment is set the gate to any. And don't worry about this, guys. I know in the last uh, the aim video or the crouch video that I did, I said I was going to do an update uh, on these. I do have an update video in the works of how we're going to actually get the correct gates and stuff like that for when we're crouch idle and walk. So that'll be a future video. So once you've changed all of these to any, go ahead and modify the speeds. So for the crouch, uh, well, idle, well, we're going to have that as zero and then the max speed as 20. And then for our stops, we're going to have that at a minimum speed of 20 and then a max speed of 999. And then for our, I for our turn in place, uh, if we go back into like the stands idle and look at the turns in place, you can see how it has it from zero to 999. So that's essentially how we're going to copy it. So in here, we're going to have zero minimum speed and a max speed of 999. And then what we're going to do is we now have our Boolean choice columns, the just slanted light, just slanted heavy and turn in place. We're going to make these all false for the landed ones. But then for the turn in place, we're going to make the crouch idle false and then the turn in place true and then leave the walk stops as any and then go ahead and save that and go back into the dense uh, top layer and then go into your walks and in here let's go ahead and add three asset rows because we have the loops the pivots and the starts left so gonna go in here and let's go ahead and look for our pistol crouch uh, loops and then our pistol crouch pivots and then our pistol crouch starts and then just kind of how we have it up here with our normal crouch walks what we're gonna do is we're going to set you know these to any the starts to true and then the is moving honestly because the is moving is kind of pointless i you can go ahead and delete that if you want but i'm just going to leave it in there because that's kind of how i left it off in the last video uh but if the is pivots what we're going to do is set that to true because we want to make sure we pivot in here and then the just traverse we're going to leave as any and then the landed light and the landed heavy we're going to have false for both of those and then the are all of those and then these should spin transitions since we don't have any spin transitions for these ones we're going to leave them as any however what we want to do in here because now we're getting into our crouch stuff uh one of the things that we need to do for both of these is we need to add a new column to both of these so if we go back to our stand idles 
So we, in our stand idols, you'll notice that we have a wants to aim boolean column because in the wants to aim video or the how to aim video, we ended up setting that up. So we do need to add this column within the crouch idols now and the crouch uh, walks or the crouch walk pistol animations. So go ahead and go back into your crouch idols and then go add a column and we're gonna add a boolean column. Go ahead and click bind and then off of your sandbox character, do the wants to aim. So if you are new to watching this video and you haven't checked out my last video, in the last video what we did was we went into the update states function in the animation blueprint and we called our sandbox character reference and grabbed our wants to aim from our character blueprint and then we just set it as a, a new variable within the animation blueprint in order to call it. So to go back to it, let's go ahead and do the wants to aim. And then in here, what we're gonna do is we're going to set false, the ones that we don't wanna aim with, so the normal idles and stops. And then for the rest of these, they will be true as they are our pistol animations and we want to aim. So once you have that, go ahead and save it and go back into the top layer and let's now go into our walks and do the same thing. <clears throat> so within our walks, go ahead and go to the end and click on add column, click on bull column, and we're going to then bind it to our wants to aim boolean. And then again, the first three we want to have as false and the last three we want as true because our last three is the ones we put in for our aiming. So now once now that we've got that set up, the last thing we need to do is to now put our animations in the database tables. I know I did skip over that, but that's because I wanted to do the, uh, the database first, get you all to separate the animations, and then we can then go into our databases and change those up. So go ahead and go back into the databases where you have your pistol folder, go into crouch, and let's go ahead and open all of these up. So I'm going to fast forward through these until I get them all open. All right, guys. So now that we got them all open, so let's go ahead and go back into our crouch idle first that we've opened. And in here, we're going to open our content drawer and go back to the uh, our motion matching data. Or I'm sorry, our animations go into pistol and then your crouch folder where you had them separated. And then in here, what we're going to grab, so let's go ahead and delete this first. And we are only just going to put the crouch pistol idle in here. So just like that, that's going to be the only thing in here. Once you have that, go ahead and save and we can close out the idle. The next one is the turn in place animations. So let's go ahead and delete all of the ones out here. And let's go ahead and add all of our crouch turns. So if you type in turn to filter that out, you'll get your four and then put them in there. Go ahead and save it once you've done that and then close out of it and let's open up our walk loops. And then we're just gonna essentially repeat them like how we've been doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this one until I get all the, the walks in here until we get to the next one. All right, guys, so once you got those in, go ahead and save and close out of that. And then repeat the same thing for the pivots. Um, so you're going to type in pivots here and then get all those, put those in. Make sure to get rid of the other ones. I keep forgetting to do that when we started. Once you've got that, go ahead and save. And then we are in our walk starts. Go ahead and get rid of all the ones in there and look for start and put all of your start in there, save that. And then lastly, let's go ahead and do our stops. So delete all those out of there, grab stop, and then boom, we have them all done. So now that we have all of our animations in the databases and we, we already took care of our post search database, now, if I go ahead and save everything and go back into the default level, let's go ahead and hit play. So here we go, we're running around and when we aim normally, like while standing, we get our aim animations. But now when we crouch, you will see that we have our crouching aiming animations and you can see that we are moving with our animations. 
So look at that. And it was literally that easy to set up. And now you have your crouching animations. So if you have any future animate or like in the future, if you have any animations where you are dealing with uh, rifles, shotguns or whatnot, it would be the same principle. But then you would have to do separate uh, choosings or chooser tables or separate like nestings and whatnot which in a future video that I have will go I'll go over and show you all how to you know make an, your own chooser table and how you would properly get that to work with the game animation sample project so other than that guys thank you for joining me in the video and I will see y'all later so other than that guys y'all take care